Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel MI Tutorials. In today's tutorial, let's take a look into some of the exciting new updates in Power BI. There have been quite a few updates that have been released in the month of May 2024. But in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about three different updates which you have been waiting for especially the enhancements to the matrix visual. So let's get started with this tutorial. Power BI has been listening to its community's feedback on improving tabular visuals. Inspired by the familiar pivot table in Excel, Power BI is transforming these visuals to offer more powerful and flexible features. In the latest May update, the introduction of layouts for metrics will elevate your data visualization experience. Now I have created this matrix visual where I have multiple fields in my row section and the value, the sum of sales in my value section. Now this is in the compact form by default. Whenever I expand them, they would expand like this and we would see the values against that particular category or subcategory. But now when you head over to the format section, you see a new update here which says layout and style presets. Under layout and style presets, you have a new option here which says layout. Now when you click on the layout here, you have three different options. By default, the layout of matrix is compact, but you now have two more options to choose from. This is very similar to what we would see in the pivot table. So when you go to the report layout in a pivot table, you have three different options here. Show in compact form, show in outline form, and then the tabular form. Power BI has now replicated the same format here in the matrix visual so that you have a similar feel of a pivot table. Now let's take a look at a closer look of each of them. When you choose the outline form, you can notice that the totals are appearing on top of the rows. And when I expand my category here, I have my category total appearing here. Likewise, when I expand my subcategory, I have my subcategory totals appearing as well. So this is related to the outline layout. And we also have an option here where you can repeat the row headers. When you go to the report layout you had an option here where you can repeat all item labels similar to that feature we have a toggle button here which says repeat row headers and when you turn this on you will notice that all of the row headers are now repeated now let's take a look at the next option here of the layout which is tabular layout when i select tabular here notice that my totals have now started to appear at the bottom instead of the top the way the totals appear is slightly different when compared to the outline form and when i expand these categories here you can notice that we're now expanding them horizontally very similar to the outline form but we have the totals here appearing at the bottom likewise when i click on the uh, plus icon here or expand the categories i now have my region appearing here and i have my subtotal for the region appearing below the rows and in this layout if you would like to repeat the row headers you can simply toggle this feature on here and you now have the headers repeating in your matrix table now this is very very similar to a pivot table that you have in your excel file the next feature that we have here is called blank rows. When you enable blank rows, after every category, a blank row will be added here. Over here, you also have options where you can choose different colors. For example, let's say if I want to add this blue color here, I can do that. And I can also control the transparency of that blank row here. And I can also enable a border if I would like to and choose the color here of my choice. And then also I have an option here to play around with the width. If you would like to increase or decrease the width and I also have an option here to play around with the transparency of that particular border. So these were the different updates related to the matrix visual which a lot of you guys have been waiting for. They are finally here in the latest release. So make sure to download the May 2024 version to access all of these features. Now let's head to the next tab here which is line updates. There have been quite a few updates to the line chart. Let's go to the format tab. And under lines here, there have been quite a few updates that have been integrated into a line chart visual. First of all, if you have multiple series, for example, let me bring in region here into the legend wherein I have different regions appearing on my chart. I can now choose to hide a particular region if I would like to from this particular chart and probably show them just as markers if I would like to or just hide the entire region itself. For example, I can go to line section here and let's say for example, I don't want to show the central region here. I would like to turn off. So now I can simply turn off that particular line from this particular visual. But however, when I hover over this, I can still see the tooltip here, which is displaying the central region sales. 
But let's say for example, you have a different requirement where you do not want to show the entire line, but you would like to just display the marker. So you can do that. For example, let me turn on the line here for central and let's head over to the marker section. I'm going to turn on the markers here. Let me select the region central here. I'm going to leave the marker on here, but for rest of the regions, I'm going to turn off the markers here. And now, only for my central region, I have the markers available. So let's choose the central marker here. I can choose the different marker type if I would like. For example, let's go ahead with the diamond here and then also increase the size of the pixels. Let's change the color here to maybe um, red. I can now simply go back to my line settings here and then turn off the particular line here. So now I'm only displaying the markers for that particular region. Now let's take a look at the next feature here, which is if you go under lines here, you will now be able to let me select all under line style we had different options here for to choose from for example we had solid which is by default we had dashed and then we also had dotted for example let me get rid of the legend that i added here let me just have one line so that it's easier to understand what's happening and now i have the fourth option in here which is custom wherein you can define how you want the line style to appear for example this accepts the value as an array there are four different numbers here that you will have to play around with to match your requirements the first number here means that it is one of the dash here the next number here refers to the gap the next number here refers to the dash and the next number here refers to the gap now let me explain what I mean by this let me quickly increase the size of this dash the first dash here the first dash and then we have gap which is 5 let me increase the second dash here to about 25 and then my last gap here is five and now you can see that the first dash that we have here let's say for example this one is talking about 35 so my first dash is this which is referring to this five so i have this my first dash here which is five the next number here is a gap the, the gap between the five and the 35 this dash and this dash refers to the number here which is gap here if I increase this to let's say 30, you can see that I've now added a wider gap between these two dashes. So to, if you want to reduce that, you can choose five here. And now the gap between the dashes has been reduced. Likewise, the next number here is 35, which means that I need a longer dash here. The number 35 denotes to the length of the dash here if i reduce this to 10 notice that how my dash size has reduced if i increase this to 50 notice that how the dash size has increased and the next option again here is referring to the gap between the dashes here so i came around this site here which has the different patterns where you can enter values for example if you would like to create a pattern like this you can enter something like this 4111 if you want a pattern like this you can enter 5515 if you need a pattern like this you can enter 124 etc you also have an option here where you can choose the dash cap for example by default the dash cap is round you also have an option here to change this to flat you can see that the slight change in the way how the dash caps appear and you also have have an option here where you can change this to square or you can change this back to round if you'd like to and then the next option here is the width where you can increase the width of these dashes you can notice that these dashes are now overlapping and they are no longer in the style that we expected them to appear because we have increased the width of these dashes to counter this problem there is another feature here which says scale by width when you toggle this on power bi will automatically manage this and create the custom line style which has been chosen according to you now let's take a look at the last feature here for this tutorial which is manage relationships now earlier we had to go to the model view and take a look at the model that we have and the relationships that we have but now when you go to the modeling tab there is an option here which says manage relationships when you click on this particular option you have this dialog box open here where you'll be able to see all the tables here that you have in your model and how the relationship has been created let's quickly go through this and on the left hand side i have the from table here and the column where i have used to create a relationship with the table here on the right hand side which is created the relationship with which is the two table here i've created a relationship here between human resources employee department history with human resources employee 
And this is also showing me that I have created many to one relationship over here. And then I have created another relationship here, which is many to many relationship and the status of that particular relationship, whether it's an active status or an inactive relationship. I can also edit the relationships right from here. And if I have to change the cross filter direction or cardinality, or if I have to make this inactive relationship, I can do so right from here. And you can see that I've now created an inactive relationship, which is being displayed here. You also have on the top right a filter here where you will be able to filter by the cardinality for example or the cross filter direction and if you would like to delete any relationships here you can simply select these check boxes here and click on this delete button here to delete any particular relationship. And if you would like to create a new relationship or if you want Power BI to automatically detect the relationships you can simply click on this button which says auto detect and Power BI will automatically detect the relationships for you. And if you would like to create the relationships manually, you can click on new relationship icon here, choose the from table, choose the to table and create the relationships here based on your requirements. So these were the three different features that caught my attention in the May 2024 release. Let me know in the comment section which feature is your favorite and why. With this, I've come towards the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. You learned something new today. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more such tutorials.